The Non Adoption Abandonment Scale Up Spread and Sustainability, or the NAS framework, is changing how we tackle healthcare innovation. Built on many years of research, this approach gives key insights into using technology in health and social care. It looks at important areas, different levels of complexity, and ideas from complexity science that shape how we put tech into practice. Over the next few minutes, we're going to delve into the core parts of the NAS framework. We'll see how it's shifting our view on adopting healthcare technology. As we talk, you'll get a solid grasp of the NAS framework and how to use it. We'll look at real examples and discuss how this knowledge can make technology work better in various healthcare settings. I'm Dr. Christian Hudson. You're watching the Essential Implementation Podcast. Let's get into it. Let's start with talking about why healthcare technology projects are so tricky. People used to think implementing new tech was simple. Find a problem, create a solution, and roll it out. But in healthcare, it's way more complicated than that, as we know. Healthcare settings are full of moving parts that interact in complex ways. This makes bringing in new technology a real challenge. Experts describe this complexity as a range of processes and objects that not only interact, but are actually defined by how they interact with each other. I find this five circle model very useful for describing this and use it when training people in implementation science. What the model is basically saying is all of these things will affect implementation outcomes, the intervention itself, the context, the people involved and how they implement. Now, the more complex each domain is, the more complex implementation and difficult implementation will be overall, but also how these things interact with each other will also determine how complex the implementation is. Now, the NAS framework breaks down this complexity into several specific areas. These include the health condition being addressed, the technology itself, what's in it for stakeholders, who's adopting it, the organization, the wider system, and how it all comes together over time. Each of these areas adds its own set of complications and often its own complexity to the mix. One big reason why people underestimate this complexity is that they think of problems as just complicated and not truly complex. They don't really seem to know the difference between complicated and complex problems and think they're the same thing. Pretty sure I used to do as well before I'd read this stuff, but they're very different. A complicated problem involves many interconnected parts, but it's ultimately predictable and solvable with enough expertise and analysis. It tends to be linear and step-by-step, -step. You need expertise and technical knowledge that's crucial. But over time, you keep trying and eventually you build up an approach that works. An example of this might be introducing a new electronic health record system across a hospital. This would require careful planning, training, and configuring the software to meet organizational needs. The challenge involves integrating the system with existing workflows and ensuring technical functionality. That's going to be a real challenge. But while it may be resource intensive, once the solution is implemented, it becomes a replicable process for other hospitals. A complex problem, on the other hand, involves many dynamic, interdependent factors that are often unpredictable and evolve over time. Problems that are complex are non-linear. They cannot be fully broken into their independent parts. Solutions are emergent and require adaptation as conditions change. Outcomes are not guaranteed, even with previous experience. Relationships between cause and effect are unclear or delayed. An example might be encouraging widespread adoption of telemedicine across diverse communities. So in this case, there's likely to be technological barriers, but also patient and provider barriers like their acceptance, with cultural attitudes, and also political aspects that will all be thrown into the mix. Factors such as trust in digital healthcare, internet access disparities, and provider training will all interact unpredictably. A solution that works well in one community may fail in another due to differences in local dynamics. So in this case of implementing telemedicine, the implementation, because it's going to be complex, would require ongoing adaptation, collaboration, and learning. We'll now see how the domains of the NAS framework help us create a narrative of these. NAS encourages us to think of the multiple influences on a complex project. We can then identify parts of the project that are simple, complicated, and complex. Once we've identified what's simple, what's complicated, and then what's complex, we can work with organizations to see where this complexity might be reduced. We can also consider how individuals and organizations might be supported to handle the remaining complexities better. So as we look at different areas of complexity in the NAS framework, we'll learn more about how to navigate these challenges and improve our chances of successfully adopting new technology in healthcare. So let's start with the condition and technology domains. These give us important insights into implementing new technologies. The condition domain contains the nature of the condition, the comorbidities, and social cultural factors. So a broken ankle is relatively simple to treat. 
Cancer is more complicated. They can tell you what the treatment will be and what your chance of survival is. Whereas dementia is a little different. It's a different kettle of fish. It's a lot less predictable. They can't really tell you how long you're going to live for, and they can't always really give you a straightforward treatment process because every patient is different. What about the socio-cultural aspects of complexity within this domain? But to give some examples of socio-cultural factors, it's things like digital literacy or comfort with technology, trust in technology, healthcare system trust, cultural attitudes towards healthcare delivery, language and communication barriers. It's all the stuff that makes people really complex and comes into play when you're trying to implement a new technology into a healthcare setting. Now, the technology part's a bit more straightforward. So think about an old telephone. Back in the day, we had an old telephone with a, a dial that you'd turn to dial the numbers. It would be dependable. Everyone would have one. They'd rarely break down. They were easy to use. There were no issues around who owns the intellectual property and you knew exactly what data you were going to get, i.e. other people on the phone. New technologies tend to be a lot more complex and more complicated. Let's take data analytics, for example. What are its material features? Well, it's quite hard to describe what it is, what knowledge is needed to use it. Well, you're gonna need someone with a specialist skill set to use data analytics effectively. What kind of knowledge does it bring into play? Well, again, the knowledge it generates is quite complex. Unlike just getting somebody on the other end of the telephone, it's going to produce algorithms and generate data that a lot of people just won't fully understand. Is it industry standard or is the company you bought it from owned the only one? And if it goes out of bust, where would you get help with this new technology? We call this getting tied into walled garden contracts. And in the National Health Service in the UK, this adds a lot of complexity. Who owns the intellectual property? That becomes an issue. So whenever you're implementing a new technology, you've got to remember, the more complex it is to implement, the less chance it will ever have of actually being implemented and the less likely it will ever be sustained. Let's look at the next section of the NAS framework. So the value proposition. It's basically anything you implement has to generate value. Now, again, this could be simple or complicated. So, for example, non-invasive liver biopsy, okay? This is where they can do a liver biopsy, but they don't need to use needles. So they can do a nice scan. It's good for patients. They've not been having a needle put into them. They no longer need a hospital bed while having it done. It's cheap to use. There's lots of demand, less impact on blood banks as well. There's no longer need the extra blood in case they bleed. And everyone in the value chain, including the patient, the hospital, everybody will gain. So in that case, the value proposition, that the value that this thing generates is pretty simple slash complicated, but it's, it's not complex. Whereas Online video consultations, the value proposition for that's a lot more complex. See, everybody thought that would transform care, but although it saves the patient time, it doesn't actually save the healthcare professional any time as they still have to sit in clinic. And now they have to run two different services, inpatient and online video consultations. So the value proposition looks at how different people in healthcare see the pros and cons of the new technology. And what makes it really complex is these views often clash. Research shows us Technology is seen as helpful and easy to use and more likely to be adopted. But what's helpful can mean very different things to different groups in healthcare. That makes it very tricky to create and implement new tech that everyone likes. So looking at the adopter system, this is just looking at the people involved in the technology, the staff, the patients and the care network and what this new tech means for them. One of the biggest factors actually is doctors' acceptance of new techs. That does seem to be the biggest factor in whether a new service will succeed locally. And so Things like past experiences with tech, how easy it seems to be to use and how well it fits with current ways of working will all affect adoption. So you can see how the NAS framework shows us how important it is to involve users in designing and implementing new tech and that successfully implementing healthcare tech needs more than just innovative ideas. It requires a deep understanding of how value propositions and adopter systems work together. This understanding sets the stage for looking at how organizational and wider system factors shape tech adoption in healthcare. Let's look at that now. So the organizational domain, this is probably the largest domain in some ways. Some organizations are just not ready for new innovations. So with this domain, we're looking at what is the organization's general capacity to innovate? How ready is it for this technology supported change? Different ways of measuring readiness. I've got an old video on that on the channel if you're interested. One way of looking at its motivation and capacity. But this domain also looks at how easy will the funding decision be? So do you need lots of funding boards to sign it off? How easily will the money flow? What are the implications for team routines? How much will it impact on current routines? What work is needed to implement it? So again, the more complicated new tech is, the longer, the more expensive and difficult it'll be to implement. The more complex, then the less likely it is to succeed at all. 
So a simple, simple, complicated aspect to this domain might be one well-led, happy organization, high psychological safety, good technology fit, Slack resource. So they've got Slack in the system to respond to challenges, overcome problems. The, the technology is well aligned with existing routines. That's likely to go well. It's not likely to be a complex part. If you apply the NAS framework to this organization, this domain wouldn't come up as complex particularly. But imagine you applied the NAS framework, you did some some thorough investigating and you found that actually this domain was complex, you'd probably find that the organization and the new technology has to be coordinated amongst multiple organizations. Maybe it doesn't fit well into the system. Maybe it disrupts local routines. Maybe success depends on this cross system saving. Well, that's a lot harder. So in this case, complexity in this domain is going to be higher. So organizational culture, resources, leadership, they all play pivotal roles in technology adoption. Organizations with a culture of innovation and adaptability are more likely to successfully implement new technologies. So if you're working with a place with strong leadership, good manager relations are going to be crucial. However, many health organizations struggle with limited resources and resistance to change. So this one often comes up as complex. Now, the wider system domain introduces additional layers of complexity. We're looking here at the political complexity policy context. So is there a policy pushed for this new tech? Is there political backing for it? What about the regulatory and legal hurdles? Does this device have the right regulatory approvals? Is it legal to use? Also, professional bodies. Is the Royal College of X behind it? No. Is the press behind it? What do people think citizens lay public think of it? Do you need lots of inter-organizational networking? So, you know, if you've got policy push, wide support, extensive networking among adopting organizations, it's likely to come up as simple or complicated in this domain. But if it's very politically tricky, there's lots of regulation, lots of legal hurdles and weak inter-organizational networking, you're probably going to find this domain comes up as a lot more complex. I've seen a quick example of this with video consultations in the UK. They thought this, that these were implemented to and hopefully to improve patient care, but the way that services would get paid for doing online consultations took a really long time to set up and I still think isn't quite fully set up. So that's had a huge impact on implementation and added a lot of complexity. So the very last sort of domain of the NAS is the, is the crucial domain of embedding and adapting over time. How can we ensure that promising technologies are not, not only overcome initial barriers, but continue to evolve and thrive within dynamic healthcare systems? So I guess this domain's really about long-term success. And really what it asks us to look at is how much scope is there to adapt and co-evolve the technology and the service over time? Because it's acknowledging that even though we might overcome all the other domains and reduce complexity in those domains and implement the new technology, it's still going to have to survive over time. And we know from work around sustainability that learning and adaptation is vital for that. So how much scope is there to do this in the organization, in the system it's being implemented? How resilient is the organization for adapting to critical events? So if you're working in a context where the technology and the organization is able to adapt over time, it's probably going to come up again as simple or complicated. But if you're applying that to a place where actually the technology is very brittle, it's hard to adapt and so is the organization, it's going to come up as more complex. So you might be wondering, this is all great, but how can I actually use the NAS framework? Well, like a lot of good implementation frameworks, there is help available. If you check out the website, I'll provide the link below. The NAS CAT tools developed from the NAS framework aim to facilitate ongoing evaluation and adaptation of technology projects. These tools will allow you to monitor complexity and make necessary adjustments throughout the implementation process, fostering a culture of continuous improvement. There are interview questions and questionnaires one can use to tease out the complexities in a project and then work with stakeholders to think about how to reduce or run with them. But remember, we don't just want to be applying NAS and listing barriers and facilitators. We want to apply it while working with those in practice and be acting on the findings in real time. That means we need to connect research and practice and see my other videos on this. As we conclude our exploration of the NAS framework, remember complexity is very subjective. So one patient might experience cancer as complex because they don't have a car. Another patient, it's only complicated because they can get to appointments quite easily. So NAS is not a tool for categorizing complexity objectively. It's about finding out what people on the front line think because they're the ones who are going to decide whether they adopt or play ball based on what they perceive to be complex. Not all domains will contain complexity. It'll always be a mix, and not all domains will be relevant. 
some technology doesn't have a condition for example. Remember, one of the most common reasons technology doesn't get implemented and sustained is that clinicians do not want to use it. So that can always be a key focus. And what a lot of people say is real key to this is you need someone who knows how to get things done in the organization. If you've got somebody like that, that can reduce complexity dramatically. As a final point, people ask me if one can use NAS for complex interventions, so not just technological ones. I think we need to find out. And if not, Maybe a version of NAS which can work with just everyday complex interventions would be ideal. Thanks for watching.